Alice in Wonderland by Lewis Carroll. The Queen's Croquet Ground. Alice noticed a tree trunk in front of her with a door in it. She opened it and found herself back in the hall with the glass table and the gold key. This time I know what to do, she said. And she nibbled some of the mushroom till she was small enough to go through the little door into the lovely garden with its flower beds and fountains. Alice was surprised to see three gardeners busily painting a white rose tree red. And even more, when she saw that they were playing cards. They were oblong and flat, with hands and feet at the corners. Their names were Two, Five and Seven. You see, miss, this here rose tree ought to have been red. Two was explaining. If the Queen sees it, we shall all have our heads chopped off. Hush, whispered Five. Here she comes. And all three fell flat on their faces. Alice looked round. First came ten soldiers carrying clubs. Then came ten courtiers decorated with diamonds. Then ten little royal children with hearts on their tunics. Next came the guests, including the Duchess and the White Rabbit. And then came the Knave of Hearts, carrying a crown on a red velvet cushion. Last of all in the grand procession came the King and Queen of Hearts themselves. Alice curtsied to the Queen and told her her name. I needn't be afraid of them, she thought. They're only a pack of cards. The Queen looked at the gardeners lying flat. Turn them over, she said to the Knave. The gardeners jumped up and started bowing to everybody. Off with their heads, cried the Queen, and the procession moved off. You shan't be beheaded, said Alice, and she popped the gardeners into a large flower pot before the soldiers could catch them. The game of croquet. Alice ran and caught up with the procession. Get to your places, shouted the Queen in a voice like thunder. It was the strangest game of croquet Alice had ever seen. The balls were curled up hedgehogs. The mallets were flamingos. The soldiers had to double up and stand on their hands to make the arches. By the time Alice had tucked her flamingo under her arm and put its head in position to tap the ball, her hedgehog had uncurled and crawled away. The players did not wait for turns and quarrelled over their hedgehogs. The Queen stamped about, shouting, Off with his or her head! every few minutes. Soon the game was over. All the players, except the King and Queen and Alice, had been sentenced to be beheaded. Alice was relieved to hear the King whisper to them, You are all pardoned. Alice was talking to the Duchess when a trumpet sounded in the distance. The trial's beginning! Come on! said the Duchess, taking Alice by the hand. What trial is that? Alice panted as she ran after her. Who stole the tarts? The courtroom was crowded with small birds and animals, as well as the whole pack of cards. The King and Queen of Hearts were sitting on their thrones. The King was judge. He wore a wig with his crown on top of it. Near him stood the White Rabbit, with a trumpet in one hand and a scroll of parchment in the other. The knave of hearts was standing in chains between two soldiers. On a table was a dish of tarts. Alice hoped that they were the refreshments. There was a jury box with twelve creatures in it. Animals, birds and a small lizard named Bill. They were all writing on slates. They're putting down their names in case they forget them whispered the Duchess, digging her sharp little chin into Alice's shoulder. Stupid things, said Alice in a loud voice. Silence in court, cried the White Rabbit. The jury were busy writing down stupid things. <coughs> Bill the Lizard's pencil squeaked. Alice could not stand that, so she went round behind him and quietly took it away. The poor little juror searched for it, and then tried to write on his slate with his finger, but of course it made no mark. Herald, read the accusation, said the king sternly. The white rabbit blew three blasts on his trumpet, unrolled his scroll and read, The queen of hearts, she made some tarts, all on a summer's day. The knave of hearts, 
He stole those tarts and took them clean away. Consider your verdict, cried the king. Uh, not yet, your majesty, the rabbit hastily interrupted. The trial comes first. Call the first witness, said the king. The evidence. This was the mad hatter. He had a teacup in one hand and a piece of bread and butter in the other. You ought to have finished your tea by now, said the king. When did you begin? The 14th of March, I think, <laughs> said the hatter. <laughs> the 15th, <laughs> said the March Hare, who was also in the courtroom. 16th, said the Dormouse, who was sitting next to Alice. Write that down, said the king. The jury eagerly wrote it down and added it up. Give your evidence and don't be nervous, said the king. Or I'll have you executed on the spot. While the Hatter was giving his evidence, the Dormouse complained to Alice. I wish you wouldn't squeeze me so. I can't help it, said Alice. I'm growing. Then grow somewhere else. You've no right to grow here, grumbled the Dormouse. Call the next witness, said the King. The White Rabbit, in his shrill little voice, read out the name Alice. Alice's evidence. Here, cried Alice, and jumped up, forgetting how large she had grown. She knocked over the jury box, and the jurors went sprawling into the crowd. Alice picked them up and stuffed them into the box. We cannot proceed till all the jury are in their proper places, said the king severely. Alice saw that Bill the lizard was upside down, so she put him back the right way up. What do you know about this business? asked the king. Nothing, said Alice. That's very important, said the king. Unimportant, your majesty means, said the white rabbit anxiously. Some of the jury wrote down important, some wrote unimportant, and some wrote both. Then the king read out Rule 42. All persons more than a mile high to leave the court. Everyone looked at Alice. That's not a regular rule. You've just invented it, said Alice. It's the oldest rule in the book. Then it ought to be number one, said Alice. Consider your verdict, said the king. No, said the queen. Sentence first, verdict after. Stuff and nonsense, cried Alice loudly. The idea of having the sentence first. Hold your tongue, said the queen, turning purple. I won't, said Alice. Off with her head, the queen shouted at the top of her voice. Who cares for you, said Alice. She had grown to her full size by this time. You're nothing but a pack of cards. At this, the whole pack rose up in the air and came flying down on her. Alice wakes up. Alice gave a little scream, half of fright and half of anger, and tried to beat them off. She found herself lying on the grassy bank, with her head in her sister's lap. Her sister gently brushed away some of the dead leaves that had fluttered down from the tree upon Alice's face. Wake up, Alice dear, she said. What a long sleep you've had.